Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Gareth here from tastytudes.com. As you begin to create in Photoshop, it is essential you are familiar with the concept Photoshop uses to create images. It's important early on that you are aware so you can create the right work to the right specification. This can be a tricky concept to understand at first, but when you do, you will be all the more confident using Photoshop. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss image size, image data size, dimension and resolution. So to begin, I'm going to dive right in and do a quick demonstration, which you can follow along with. So let's first open up an image to work with. This image can be found in the introduction folder in the project folder. Now you can download the project folder for free. The download link is in the description. So with the project folder open, click introduction, open the ISDR folder and open the 01 image example file inside. And you should have something that looks like this. Now in Photoshop, we can quickly identify the image size, dimension and resolution of an image by coming up to the top menu, selecting image, then scroll down and click image size. Upon click, up will pop a menu. This will give us the approximate image size, dimension and resolution of the image. So here at the top, it states the image data size and we can see here this is 3.99 megabytes. Next, we have the dimensions of the image, this being 1181 by 1181 pixels. Below this, we have the width and height. If, if I click the tab to the right and click centimeters, we can see the physical image size is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Now, if I click the tab on the right again and choose pixels, notice the values are the same as above. Now here we have the option to type in new values should we wish to change the image size or dimension. Now under this we have the resolution of the image. Currently this is 300 dpi and again we can type in a new value and change this if we wish. So at a glance we can see the image data size, the physical image size, dimension and resolution of this image. As you begin to use Photoshop, you will notice yourself coming into this menu often to check and confirm what size you're working to or even change the image size and dimension. If you wish to change the image size and dimension, all you have to do is type in the new value and it will change. For example, if I change this image from 300 dpi down to 72, Photoshop will attempt to scale down the image. You can now see that in the dimensions above, it's telling me if I press OK, this image will change from the current size to this new size of 283 by 283 pixels. Also, Photoshop is stating that the image data size will go from 3.99 megs to 234 kilobytes. Now, if I change the value to the right to centimeters, you can see that it still remains technically the same physical size as before, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So I'll click this back to pixels, but this time change the width and height back to 1181 by 1181 pixels. Now notice that the resolution has remained 72 and the estimated image size will go back to 3.99 megabytes. So DPI, did not affect the physical image size there. So I'll press cancel to close. This time I'll press the shortcut for image size, Command, Alt and I. With the width and height values set to pixels to the right, this time I will type 500 in each box and press OK. Upon click, the image will decrease in size. So by coming to the top menu, selecting image, scrolling down and clicking image size, we can check and change the size of an image or we can press the shortcut key, Command, Alt and I. Excellent. Now it's important to mention that when dealing with these principles, it all depends on what you are creating and what you are creating for. When working in Photoshop, it may help to think in two mindsets, working for print and working for digital. When it comes to designing for print, you will need to pay close attention to 
physical image size and resolution. When it comes to designing for screen, you only have to pay close attention to dimension. So what is image size, dimension and resolution with regards to print? To help communicate this, you will need to open a document I have prepared especially for this tutorial. So back in the project folder, open the O2 example file inside and you should have something that looks like this. So it will help to become familiar with these four terminologies. We can see them up here to the left in this key and each one has its own color which is represented below. So we have image size, image data size, dimension and resolution. So image size is the physical size of an image. Let's imagine this as the physical size it would be in your hand if you printed it out. In Photoshop, this is measured in millimeters, centimeters and inches, values that exist in real life. If we look at the diagram, here we can see that each of these images are indeed 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. They are all the same physical size. Now each centimeter is marked out with a gray line across the left and bottom. Notice the space that exists between each line gets larger on each example towards the right. Now keep this in mind. Image data size is the file size on your computer hard drive. If we look carefully, we can see, unlike with image size, the image data size varies on each example. Dimension is the image size on your computer screen. In Photoshop, this is also measured in millimeters, centimeters and inches, but also, importantly, pixels. If we look carefully at the diagram below, we can see the pixel dimensions vary on each example getting larger to the right. Next, we have resolution. This is the pixel density contained inside an image. We learned in the previous video that raster images are made of individual pixels. Resolution is always measured and referred to in DPI, dots per inch. This is the number of pixels that are contained in each inch of an image. So DPI is the amount of pixels that are squeezed into a physical image size, that image that you hold in your hand. If we look at the diagram below, we can see the various DPI applied to each example. The bigger the DPI, the bigger the pixel dimension. Now, if you were to print each one of these images separately to their native DPI, they would all come out the same, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. So if that is true, then why did they vary in size here visually on the screen? Now, if you look very closely, we can see each image has a different DPI. It's the DPI, the resolution that will determine the pixel density. The larger the pixel density, the more pixels will make up an image. Thus, the larger the pixel dimensions will be. So the first example on the far left is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. This has a DPI of 72, which makes the pixel dimension 284 by 284 pixels. Now, because the DPI is only 72, there will not be as many pixels inside each centimeter that makes up the physical image size. The second example is also 10 by 10 centimeters. This has a DPI of 150, over double the previous example. This makes the pixel dimension 591 by 591 pixels. Now, because the DPI is 150, there will be more pixels in each centimeter that makes up the physical image size. This is why the space between my centimeter lines are larger here compared to the first example. So the last example is also 10 by 10 centimeters, but this has a DPI of 300, which makes the pixel dimension 1181 by 1181 pixels. Now, because the DPI is 300, there will be a lot more pixels in each centimeter that makes up the physical image size. So even though the physical image size for each example is the same, 
the 300 dpi example contains over three times more pixels inside than the first example at only 72 dpi. Now, what you will find is if you printed all these images off, the image at 300 dpi will be higher quality, and that is because there are simply more pixels making up the image. The image at 300 dpi has a greater pixel density than the image at 72, allowing for more detail. So the image, in theory, is the same size, but the 300 dpi has more pixels inside the image, allowing for more detail. A good example of this is with new generations of digital cameras. Modern cameras today have light capturing sensors that allow you to capture images with multiple megapixels which enable them to capture a lot of detail. The pictures produced will have the same image scale and physical size as traditional images, generally 6x4, but will have huge pixel densities, allowing for immense detail. This allows you to print out mega sharp, mega large and detailed images. Now it's important to mention that DPI and dimension also affects the image data size of an image. The more pixels you have in your image, the more data will be contained in the image file. And we can see there the image data sizes are varying, getting bigger to the right. So we can see a clear file size difference there as more pixels are contained in an image. So keep in mind the difference here between image size, dimension and resolution for print. Now, if you're creating work for print, you will have to work to a resolution of at least 300 dpi. Print requires 300 dpi because essentially this is the optimum dpi our eyes can detect. Anything above this would be excessive. So we should send our files to print at a maximum of 300 dpi. If you're preparing work for magazines or leaflets, you will be working to the physical image size of around A5, A4, A3 and so on. Or it or to a custom size in millimeters, centimeters, and inches. Now for print, you could work to a lower DPI than 300, but what you will find is your final outcome may not be as sharp or as clear as it would be if you were preparing your work at 300 DPI. So now we come to digital. To help communicate this, we will need to open another document I have prepared for this tutorial. So back in the project folder, this time open the O3 digital example file inside and you should have something that looks like this. Now, when creating artwork and graphics for screen-based media, it is actually irrelevant which resolution you work to. When creating media for digital, it's all about the dimensions. If you're creating graphics for websites, video or mobile devices, you will have to work to a specific pixel dimension. In this example, I have three images. Each of these are set at the same dimension, but have different DPIs. We can see here that the DPI does not affect the outcome of the visual image screen size. Since this is for screen and raster images are made of pixels, it's only the dimension of the pixels that will determine the image size outcome on the screen. If we are preparing work for screen, we should always request the dimensions and work to pixels. Now, if you are required to create images for a retina display, you will usually find that the dimension of the images will be around double the size of the normal size. So that is a brief overview of image size, dimension and resolution, and how to view an image size and also change it in Adobe Photoshop. In the next video, we are going to look at the fundamental basis of any artwork created in Photoshop. Next, we are going to learn at how we work with layers in Adobe Photoshop. See you in the next video.